The Studio Display is Apple's latest external monitor that will come in at a whopping $1599 price point. Lots of people are comparing this monitor to the LG UltraFine 5K that came out roughly six years ago for a starting price of $1299. And so in this video, we're just gonna go over my overall thoughts on the Studio Display, but also put it up against the UltraFine 5K monitor to see if this is truly an upgrade or not. Now, feel free to skip around. There should be chapters here if you want to, but I figured you all wanna know how this monitor looks compared to the LG, and so let's just start right there. The panels are very similar, which is obvious. They both will probably look the same to the average person, but there are some noticeable differences when you really start to look closely between these two displays. The first thing you're gonna notice is brightness. LG maxes out at 500 nits of brightness. The studio display comes in at 600 nits. It might not seem like a huge difference on paper, but it's definitely noticeable. This may or may not pick up well on camera, but in person, you can definitely tell for sure. Watching the content, you can also tell there's a difference in color and contrast. I'm noticing a little bit more vibrancy compared to the LG monitor. It's not as washed out. I think you can tell while watching this video, but to me, it's much more noticeable in person. In fact, it's worth pointing out that when you pull up a video on the studio display on YouTube, you do get the HDR setting. If you do that on the UltraFine, you don't get the HDR setting. So just something to point out. At the end of the day, to the average eye and the everyday consumer, it's pretty similar. Both panels are very, very good, especially at this 5K resolution. There actually aren't many, if any, 5K monitors that look this good. And the fact that the LG one still holds up six years later, uh, and it's still a viable option, that's pretty impressive to me. So let's move on to webcams. Both monitors have a 1080p webcam, but the LG is again six years old, so you should expect this to not be as good. Uh, and the studio display features the same 12 megapixel ultra wide camera that's found on the iPad Pro and is powered by the A13 chip. Yes, that's right. There is an A13 chip inside of this monitor. And so you can get Apple's center stage feature. However, early reports suggest that something is off with this webcam. Could it be software? Could it be hardware? I don't know, but it doesn't look that good. And unfortunately, I have to agree after using it, I think this webcam is lacking a bit. And I'm hoping it's something that Apple can do with software because it's pretty bad when you compare it to something that's six years old. Now, you don't get center stage, and if slash when this webcam gets fixed, the combo could be really nice for those of you who have a lot of video calls. Now, the inclusion of center stage is nice, but to me, I'd rather just have maybe the better camera that's found in the 27-inch iMac or even the M1 24-inch iMac, because I think those are some of the best webcams that you get inside of a Mac, unfortunately, to this day. The microphones are pretty good on both monitors too. I would love to know your thoughts on how I sound in this clip here. So let me know in the comments down below. So this is LG's uh, Ultrafine 5K monitor webcam and microphone. I'd love to know your thoughts. The lighting isn't great. This is just standard office lighting. Um, I did that on purpose because this is what most people probably would have. Um, and to be honest with you, uh, in other tests that I've used this, um, webcam, it's looked a lot better, but right now it doesn't look so great. And I think it's gonna look just like the studio display because in this lighting, the studio display didn't look that great either. But I guess we'll find out when I put it next to each other in the edit. So I would love to know your thoughts in the comments down below. Also, let me know which one you think sounds better. So this is the studio display webcam and microphone. Uh, it has center stage, it's powered by the A13 chip. So if I start moving, you will see that it is following me around and you can see all of the mess that I have behind me. This is the difference between what you would get with LG and what you would get with the studio display. Uh, ultimately, I was expecting this to be a lot better. I feel like they're gonna be pretty close. It might even swing towards the uh, LG UltraFine 5K, but I guess we'll find out when we put them right next to each other. And again, let us know in the comments down below. Speakers, on the other hand, that goes to the studio display. These speakers sound fantastic for what they are. I'm honestly thinking for those of you who wanna just keep a clean, minimal setup, maybe you can't have music super loud all the time, or you just don't need anything that loud. You just wanna be able to have something that's good for videos and the occasional, you know, going through your Apple Music or Spotify playlist. Get yourself a good pair of headphones for when you do want to blast it uh, and you don't want to disturb others, but you can easily roll with these speakers that are built into the studio display when you aren't using headphones, and I think you'd be totally happy. They have a decent amount of low end for a monitor, and it just sounds pretty full. Again, 
they're inside of a display, so you kind of have to keep that in mind when you're comparing them. They're not going to be crazy external monitors that sound really good, that cost thousands of dollars. That's not the case here. But for what they are, they are pretty good. So you're just going to have to take my word for it because I don't think it's going to translate well on camera. There are four USB-C ports on the back of each display. So one Thunderbolt and the rest are all USB-C. But the studio display has a 10 gigabit USB-C port uh, across the board. And so if you plug in an external drive, for example, I've noticed that transfer speeds have been noticeably faster on the studio display over the LG. So again, something to keep in mind if that's something that you do all the time. The power cord situation is interesting. It turns out my earlier thought on this cable being fixed to the monitor is wrong, kind of, not really. You can apparently remove the cable, but I have been giving it a pretty decent pull on this and it's not budging and I'm not gonna keep trying. We basically have the same HomePod power cord situation all over again. You can take it out. Apple suggests you don't do that. I suggest you don't do that because I don't want you to risk any further damage to the monitor if you pull too hard. Maybe you pull it too hard and it falls off the desk. I don't know, I would just leave it alone. If you need to take it out, I think Apple uses this ridiculous tool that can help remove the cord. For what it's worth, you can remove the cable very easily on the LG Ultrafine. I don't think that's a perk or a feature, it's just weird. So just something to point out again, but if you need to remove the cord, I would just take it to Apple to be safe. When it comes to the design, I don't think this is something that most people will argue with. The studio display, in my opinion, it wins hands down. There's tons of premium aluminum materials being used to build out this monitor. It looks premium, it feels premium, it is premium. It's actually fairly reminiscent of Apple's earlier affordable monitors in its own Thunderbolt display, which we actually have one right here. Minus the Apple logo on the front, to me it looks pretty much the same. And especially when you turn it around back or if you look at the speaker grill on the bottom, it shares a very similar style. And shout out OW for actually sending this out to us. Um, you can pick up used products like this on their website at maxsales.com. Not an ad, but just wanted to point that out. Now, if we go over to the LG Ultrafine, it's made up of clunky plastic. It's a bit of an eyesore. And if you're going for aesthetics, this ain't it. Functionally, perfectly fine monitor. If you're being reasonable and you don't care about the look, then yeah, I mean, totally fine. But it's a no for me in the aesthetics department. Again, I'm aware most people will not care. So yeah, it's not that big of a deal, but I just really like the look and the feel from the studio display over the Ultrafine 5K. Now you can easily remove the stand on the LG Ultrafine and attach a VESA monitor arm if you want to. Not something you can do so easily on the studio display. It was actually previously reported that whatever stand option you chose at checkout was in fact the option you were stuck with, but it does appear according to Apple that you can upgrade after purchase to the tilt and height adjusting stand if you want to, but you'll have to take it into an Apple store and have them do it. The tilt stand, by the way, is fine. It does work for me, but I could use more height at times, so maybe I'll try out the, the better stand, the $400 stand, or maybe a vase amount, who knows. The LG can do both height and tilt, so there is that, but one of the biggest issues with this monitor is the insane amount of wobble you get. It's horrific and every little bump on the desk or if you're a heavy typer will almost certainly make your monitor wobble and that's super frustrating to me. So, you know, that's not something you're gonna get on the studio display. It does not move. It's built really well. There is no wobble. Lastly, I do wanna touch on some of the issues that people have had over the years with Ultrafines from LG and Apple in their little partnership. I used to be a heavy user of this monitor and I've experienced these issues myself. And while I do really like the actual display itself, its 5K image was incredible and it still is pretty good, the image retention was really bad. There were a lot of other issues reported by other users, whether it was compatibility issues with some Macs, the image retention or burn-in issues that I've personally experienced, etc. It's not something that we should just dismiss lightly. So if you're planning to buy this monitor somewhere secondhand, especially if someone has used it for a long period of time, it is worth knowing these issues before making that purchase. Now that's not to say the studio display won't have any issues or anything down the line, but something tells me it will be better in quality control over the LG Ultrafine. I've used a ton of these displays, whether it was in the iMac, the 27 inch one, or you know even the Pro Display XDR that Apple just made a few years ago. Um, those monitors have held up really well so far, so I don't expect anything like that. 
Obviously, the studio display is $15.99, and even if Apple still sold the LG monitor at the same price that it started off six years ago, it would still be $300 cheaper. And so I can see why someone wouldn't want to waste the extra money on the studio display, but I genuinely think this is a better monitor overall. The design, the form factor, the build quality, the display itself, while not drastically better, is better to me overall. But yeah, I personally would choose the studio display over the LG UltraFine 5K. It's objectively better, of course. I am well aware that you could probably get a 5K UltraFine for under $1,000 these days. And it's so hard for me to argue against doing that since it is a very similar 5K panel and it's still a very solid 5K monitor. And so if you're after this and you're saving money or you want to save money, then yeah, I, I can't really tell you not to, except I would just say be careful of the quality and the issues for using those monitors long term. But of course, I'd love to hear your thoughts on everything that we just talked about in the comment section down below. What are your thoughts on the studio display? Have you used the UltraFine 5K in the past? Let me know in those comments. This has been Dan with Mac Rumors. Thanks so much for watching and hope to see you around in the next video.